Hello, so um, a couple months ago I accidentally broke my S-Pod, or rather one of the six circuits, uh, by reversing the battery terminals on accident, and uh, one of the six circuits uh, fell victim to that and no longer works. In fact, if I try to switch it, it'll blow the fuse every time. So I've just disconnected the switch for that one circuit, and I've got the other five working. But anyway, I decided that I should probably rebuild my own accessory fuse block because then I can, you know, increase the switches from 6 to say 12 or something and maybe throw in some other features. So I've been planning it out of my mind and then I came across this circuit simulator on lushprojects.com and I thought, hey, I'd build the same circuitry as the S-Pod in the circuit simulator and see if it works. So it does and I want to show it to you. So, this is basically how an S-Pod works. Um, here is the battery, right? 12 volts. And then you have the switch panel. This will go inside the car, and each of these little diagonal white lines, those are your switches. And each one of these big things is a relay. And there are six of them in this case. And what the relays do is low power current goes to this coil and that coil is an electromagnet which is near another switch that's held open by a spring so when you have low power current going through this coil it creates a magnetic field and it forces this upper switch to close against the power of the spring against the force of the spring excuse me and then when you turn off the switch, you destroy the magnetic field, and then the switch up here returns back to the open position. Well, when this switch up here is closed, then it allows high power current to go through the closed switch and then to all your accessories. Now, up in this area, this would be a fuse block, so each of these would be fused appropriately for each of these accessories. Now in this case, I've set the accessories up to be lamps. All the lamps are 15 watt lamps uh, set to operate at 12 volts DC. So I put little labels around here to show you what kind of current is running through each position along the circuit. Up here, these are, right now they say 5.8 nanovolts, which is essentially zero voltage. And then over here, I have the currents going to each of these lamps and that would sort of be an indicator of what sort of uh, fuse you would need to size that circuit for. Now what you can't really see here is that I would have all these going to a positive bus and then the return cables all going to a negative bus so that just like the spot you can run your pa positive and negative cables from each accessory both to like a positive terminal post and a negative terminal post on a little bus that's all neat and organized in your engine bay. So I'm going to start the circuit now and show you how it works. Let me reset it. Okay, so this simulator is running right now. You can see the timer is counting up. And uh, right about now, one second has passed in the simulation. So if I turn on this switch, I have low current going through here, right? You see 600 milliamps, that's less than an amp, that's very low current. The low current is going through here and it's going through this coil and the coil creates a magnetic field which closed this switch. See, if I, if I open this switch, then this switch opens. And if I close this switch, again, this is the one that's in the panel, this is the switch that's inside of the relay. If I close that and this switch closes and it allows 12 volt uh, power to go through but here it's at 1.4 amps this is higher current and it goes through the light turns on the light and then it connects all up to this negative terminal bus and goes back to the battery or ground you could you could make this a ground but I really don't know what the advantage or disadvantage is. The S-Pod connects back to the battery. It's got a positive lead and negative lead going to the battery, so I assume that you know they know what they're doing 
Um, but you know, you often see a lot of accessories being grounded right after the accessory, like uh, you know, like switches that just ground to some little screw that you find in the cabin, which I guess is probably fine. But I don't know. I think some it's better to go to the battery. I don't know. So all these are the same, but I kind of want to show you how they all work, right? So let me turn on this one. Now your current is running through this relay uh, inductor coil, and then that's causing this switch to open by the magnetic field, or sorry, this switch to close by the magnetic field. And now we're running 1.4 amps through accessory number three. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can expand this to as big of a, of a switch array as you want. Um, and if I turn them all on, you can see now I got 600 milliamps going through all the switches, 12 volts and 1.4 amps going to all these guys. Now let's let's pause the circuit here for a minute. Oh, nope, stop. And let's edit this light to say that it's something like uh, a 100 watt lamp, like maybe a, a halogen uh, Pia lamp or something like that. So now this is a heavier duty uh, light. Imagine these are all LEDs and they take very low current and then you have a halogen that takes a lot of current. So I'll reset it and now you can see that this guy's taking 9.4 amps. So maybe for a 100 watt lamp maybe you want to use a 10 amp or a 15 amp fuse. Probably 10 amp would be cutting it too close but 15 would be fine. But you can still see that you still have 600 milliamps across all the switches, so adjusting the power draw on each one of these guys doesn't change the amount of current that's going through your switches in your cabin. It's all very low current, very safe. The heavy duty stuff is going through the uh, bigger gauge wire uh, going from your fuse block to all your accessories. And that's basically how the S-Pod works, and this is what I intend to build with a waterproof enclosure and a bunch of marine uh, grade relays and I'll probably do six uh, no I'll probably do 12 12 accessory slots I think that's probably way overkill but I would like to have you know at least six for exterior lights so that'd be like driving lights fog lights those uh, a pillar cowl lamps that takes up two slots because there's a left and a right so that's four and then probably a roof LED bar and then probably backup lights or since I don't really have a roof rack right now maybe just the backup lights like on the rear tire or something and then maybe rock lights I don't know whatever six and then on the interior I think I would like to have a couple of extra 12 volt like cigarette lighter ports kind of spread throughout because really I just have the one and it's not really enough and then I'd like one to feed a uh, a 12 volt DC to 120 volt AC inverter uh, so I can run like wall outlets like a laptop charger and stuff like that uh, and then probably one running to a onboard air compressor uh, I already have you know the circuit wired up for the mini air compressor for the front locker uh, which I want to be isolated I want it to be on its own and I don't want it to be running through the rest of the circuit panel but that little one is not big enough to air up tires, so I think it would be cool to run a separate circuit to a large compressor that is capable for airing up tires or, you know, air mattresses or whatever else you'd use a high capacity air compressor for. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks.